Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in the precinct in Chalfont St Peter as we begin part three of our heritage walk, looking at the plaques around the village of Chalfont St Peter. So we finished part two here. I said about how this is the more modern part and not the most popular part as in buildings to look at of Chalfont St Peter. But I'm gonna show you some of what was here first, but I'm gonna start with this one, the high street in the 1950s. You can see, looking up there, the only building I think still to be there is that there. That is the White Hart pub just over there. Interestingly, there appears to be a Barclays Bank and there still is a Barclays Bank, but it's not the same building. So with the precinct just over here, I've got a couple more plaques to show you. There's this one here, which someone's parked a bike in front of, looking up the marketplace. Now, that's today's view. So you can see the difference. Not really anything is the same. You can see just how narrow Marketplace would have been compared to what it is today. Of course, then it was known as Gold Hill Lane, as we talked about in part one. Now, on the other side of the fence, we have another plaque, and it shows exactly what was here before the precincts. Have a look, there's the precincts, built in the 1960s. It's great, yes, it's got a lot of shops, a lot of flats, but architecturally wise, it's not that attractive. This is what it replaced. A really rather idyllic village scene with a ford on the River Misborn. So I'll show you where that ford was because we're going to come to that, but there was a ford here. Well, the ford would have been there and um, there'd have just been a few buildings, another pub around there. So the river is culverted right underneath here. So somewhere below that car park is the River Misborn. Now I'm going to cross the road and um, we're going to move on to another one right here at the beginning of the high street. It's a grocery store and a post office, so that was this building here where there's now an empty shop. So um, there would have been a post office set into a sash window and Mr Keys and his door, a telegraph boy stands by. So you can just see that there and there's the boy who would deliver the papers. There's the parish church, so let's go and have a look at that now. And as we go, I can show you where the Ford would have been. So the Ford would have been there, where that white van is. And uh, people would have, you know, driven straight through it. It wouldn't have been really, you know, it was quite normal for rivers just to flow right through the middle of the village. Now, the next plaque is in the churchyard. So I'm gonna take you into the churchyard and um, we're gonna come back to the Ford in a moment, but let you see the architecture of this lovely church. I was christened here when I was a baby, so it's uh, quite a special church to me. I've, I've you know, been to various services throughout the years in St. Peter's Church in Chalmers St. Peter. And um, over there is the village hall. Unfortunately, the church isn't open today. I've already tried. Otherwise, we could have perhaps gone and had a look, but maybe another time we'll do that. That's the village car park over there, where we started part one, where we will be going again in a later video. Now it's um, the village hall's there. It's this tree we've come to look at because there's a plaque on it. It shows the old vicarage. Have a look at that. So having a look at it, you can see obviously the vicarage. That gravestone there is still there, that big brick tomb. So the vicarage would have been literally there, just the other side of that hedge. So it's a real shame really, it has been demolished, but I suppose, you know, they obviously needed somewhere to put the village car park. There is a, another vicarage now, the vicar lives about halfway between here and George Cross. There is still a vicarage for the church, to let you see it, there's the tower. This extension here, that was built, I remember it being built in my lifetime. So as I said, I was christened here. The doorway used to be just over there, the main porch. So I've got pictures of like my relatives all standing outside there when I was a baby. I don't remember that. I do remember other members of my family, my sisters getting christened there, and that was always the entrance. So it must have been at some point, certainly this century, that this extension was built. I do remember them building it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you around the back of the church and we'll go back to the village centre. We'll have another look at the room Isborne. Um, that's where then the vicarage would have been, literally there, the vicar would have come through that gate. I'm going to take you around here, so we're now around the quieter side of the churchyard, so uh, it gives us a chance to compare 
the uh, modern architecture with the older architecture. It's nice how they've still got the stone tableted corners, just like the older church building has. So, you know, it's quite nice to see. It's a building, sometimes you see ugly extensions on modern buildings. That's an extension, you can tell it's modern, but it's done really nicely. It's also done in um, English Bond. This is English Bond, where you have, you've got one row of headers, or no, one row of stretchers, one row of headers. So um, it's a solid wall. On more modern buildings, many bit after the war, you have a cavity wall and you have just bricks, you know, each layer is stretchers. You also get um, Flemish Bond where one row is header stretcher, header stretcher. So um, perhaps we'll do a video one day about different types of bonds of bricks, but um, leave that for another time. But I just want to show you that. So back to the front of the church, and there's one more plaque in the churchyard. This one here on this tree gives us another view of how the high street used to look. So this one's a bit more modern, it's in the 1960s, but still very different. As you can see, um, there's a very London-like bus stop, because there would have been London country buses. There is still a bus stop here, it's over there. We're gonna have to go over to that one in a minute, because it's a plaque. On that building there, that was the George, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So you can see how it had been, but it's obviously before the precinct was built. So unfortunately this building here is no longer there. Right, we're gonna go out of the churchyard now and um, we're going to go across to that bus shelter. So um, there is a plaque here by the River Mizborn. I'm going to show you that one first. There's two actually on the bus shelter. I'm just going to walk here, let you see the Mizborn. So that's the River Mizborn there. More of that in a moment. I'm going to run across the road to the this bus shelter. No buses actually stop here anymore though. Gives us another view of how it used to be. Now the interesting thing about this one is, you can see the Greyhound pub, that building there, and this building here, Bridge House, is that building there, it's now the Frost Partnership, so they survive, but what happens is beyond there, we'll go and look at that in a moment, the high street used to carry on to what is now the roundabout, but unfortunately it was all demolished when they put the road in. But now let's have a look at an earlier picture of um, the Greyhound. Now, you can see by looking at it, there was um, a carriageway in through there, which is now that there. So they filled that in, made it part of the pub, but the horses would have once gone right through. Now, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you across the road and we'll look at the one by the Misborn. So here we are by the River Misborn. There's the Greyhound pub over there now. There's another plaque just here. And this one I really like, because it really shows how similar some places can be, but still how different. So you've got the Greyhound pub, you've got Bridge House, and you've also got what was known as the George. But have a close look at these cottages there. Only one of them survives, just where that white van is. So that's a real shame. But that was obviously built when they put the roundabout in and, and the dual carriageway, which goes along behind over there. And then of course this, is where the culvert starts. You may wonder why there's that little um, open bit there. That was because that was built for horses to drink. So when they put the culvert in, people said, well, the horses won't be able to drink from the ford. So they left a little opening so horses could come in and drink from the ford. So the culvert runs right underneath the precinct and it just comes out on the other side. But one day we'll do a video on the River Misborn and we'll talk about that then. I'm now gonna go around the other side of the Greyhound by the roundabout and show you some more of these plaques. So here we are around the other side of the Greyhound pub. I'm having to shout because we are by the busy road. Now see that gable end there? That's the row of cottages I just mentioned. So that would have carried on right out into the middle of where the roundabout has been put in. Now if we have a look here, you can see how the high street carried on. So the high street really carried on before they opened all of this out to make it into a dual carriageway. The road we've got over there, we're gonna go and look at that in a minute, that's Joiner's Lane. That has just been a little lane going up from the high street. It's now all residential. That's the dual carriageway I said about over there. So they really had to pretty much demolish half the village centre to put this road widening scheme in. Now, 
I'm gonna take you into the pub car park because there's a plaque there to show you. So um, yeah, just to give you an idea, this would have been the middle of the high street, not the end. Those cottages, you know, carried right on. It's really strange in a way um, how it's kind of been, you know, changed so much over the years. So let's go and have a look. There is a plaque down here at the end of the pub car park. Going to show us a bit more of that high street that's no longer there. So here we are. So there would have been another pub somewhere, probably on this bit of grass here. It was called the Rose and Crown. So, you know, all of that was gone. I mean, it would have been literally well, next door to this one. So you can see just how much really has changed in this village. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get back up to crown level and I'm gonna go across the road. I'm not gonna do this bit on film. I'm gonna run across the road and show you a couple more over on the other side of the roundabout by Joiner's Lane. So I'm just now coming out of the underpass that's taken us under the dual carriageway and beside the roundabout to um, the bottom of Joiner's Lane. So a moment ago, we were over there by the Greyhound Inn. The next plaque I want to show you is just here at the beginning of Joiner's Lane, hiding in. This is an elm tree. A lot of people think all the elms have died because of Dutch elm disease. Well, they do still grow, but they only grow to a certain height. I can't really show you on this one, but they do start to die out. But perhaps we'll do a video on trees another time, but I just thought you'd like to see this elm that's kind of half hiding this plaque. This plaque shows Swan Farm. Unfortunately, Swan Farm was demolished to make way for the roundabout, but it was lived in by the Bosner family. Now, if you have a look there, just see, that's Charlie Bosner. He was the farmer. So it must have been somewhere about here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get cross Joiner's Lane as soon as this car has come, and I'm gonna show you the next one. Now, something a bit strange happened. Unfortunately, this one was stolen by someone. You know, I don't know why. Um, so they've put a new one back. Um, well, I'll let you read what they've had to say. So yeah, it's a shame that that happened. But anyway, it shows this was where um, it was a Smithy, David Brown Smithy. He lived here. The site is now a car garage. So um, yeah, that's how things change. We're now gonna walk a little way along there. The next plaque is just to, along the main road towards Amersham. So I've just come a little way along the A413, the Amersham Road. And um, this is the final plaque I'm gonna show you in part three. In part four, we're gonna go further out away from the village centre to look at the rest of the plaques because they're all a bit further, you know, now out. But anyway, this one, here we are. So it shows some shops that would have been somewhere. So as I said, the high street, you know, would have, was somewhere in the middle of this dual carriageway. There was also some tyres and it says the old mill farm was on the left. So somewhere there was a farm in amongst all of this. So it's really amazing to see just how much it changed and I wouldn't say this is for the better I know obviously they've had to put the main road in but you know they've really changed this part of Chalfont St Peter to um, really just just the road you know it's um, they've demolished buildings and effectively you know not replaced them with anything so I'm gonna leave part three here I'm gonna carry on walking further out out into the village and we'll have a look at a few more in part four so thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe comment tell your friends Goodbye.